So good morning. Welcome to this session about metrics and um, really making sense of them. And uh, what I mean with metrics is really everything, everything uh, in Prometheus, like every metric that an application exposes to Prometheus, that a cluster, Kubernetes OpenShift cluster exposes, that is scraped by Prometheus um, for later use. How does that later use look like? So how can you best, best uh, consume those metrics? So I'll be showing a bunch of tools that we're using in our team um, to make sense of the metrics. And um, in the end, I will also show us a short POC that I'm currently experimenting with. So I hope the, the POC and the network connection will be fine for that. Um, my name is Manuel. I'm working as a site reliability engineer in the um, managed OpenShift team at Red Hat. Um, yeah, we are essentially running um, OpenShift clusters for our customers. And uh, some of that knowledge that we gained doing that for, for a couple of years, we also compiled in, into that book over there. Um, if you have a Red Hat developer account, you can read that online if you're interested. Um, and yeah, in the previous life, I've been also working at a proprietary software company um, building analytics tools for, for businesses. I only mention that here because it tells you a bit of the story of why I'm here now to today talking about metrics, because um, like, there are a couple of companies and uh, engineering teams out there that built analytics tools for businesses like literally for decades. And um, businesses, huge businesses, base their decisions on uh, these analytics tools. And um, I believe that we can still today learn something from these old, old school tools in how we um, analyze the data that we have in, in our clusters, the data that our applications, that our Kubernetes and OpenShift clusters expose. So speaking of which, um, what do you think, how many metrics does a single OpenShift cluster expose today? When you like create a new managed OpenShift cluster, what do you think, how many metrics do you have in, a, in the Prometheus instance? Probably to rephrase the two things, who would believe that there are more than 500 metrics in a Prometheus instance from a cluster? Okay, more than 1,000? More than 2,000? Yes, some less, 3,000? You just believe everything that I say, right? It's this number. 2,647 metrics are exposed in, in the cluster that I created this week for, for the demo. So um, I don't think that uh, there is a single person that understands all these metrics and um, can like kn knows all the labels that are exposed in every single of, of these metrics. So luckily, there are, there are a bunch of tools available that you can use to um, understand the, uh, the metrics better, to even figure out what they are and what might be related if you probably know a term or something like that. So um, I'll be showing you a bunch of tools that we use in the SRE team when we like need, when we craft new queries for our SLOs, for our alerts, or just for ad hoc analysis in, in some of the clusters. So um, the first tool that we're looking at is uh, the OpenShift console. So if uh, you're lucky and your Kubernetes cluster happens to be an OpenShift cluster, there are already some tools uh, shipped with it that help you do that analysis. Um, and let me quickly go there. That's not the, oh, it is, but it's not what I wanted to show. Okay, so um, there is this observed hub, and there are some nice dashboards ready to use that are um, built by the console, web console team, I think, or by the observability team. And um, this is about the health of the, the API server, so you can see there is nothing really um, worrying the API server currently. There is something going on here which looks a bit weird, so something is apparently regularly creating waves of, um, of list queries of, what is it? Deployments. Hmm. That's something weird that I deployed earlier, so we don't see just straight lines on the graphs, but we see something a bit more interesting here. So it's really a very stupid deployment that lists deployments um, over and over again. So as I said, it's not really, it's, it's a lot of requests, but it's not worrying the APIs over here. Um, and we can take a look at other dashboards that we have here. It's like a lot of um, different dashboards that you can use to figure out how the health of the cluster is. This one, for example, is uh, like CPU usage and um, memory usage and stuff like that. And we can see that something spiky is going on here again. And um, as you see, it's also repeating things. It almost looks like something is like building up memory and then crashing and then starting over again. And I don't know, I wonder if that's probably related to that other thing that we've seen earlier. So probably want to inspect it here and figure out what's going on, and now you see like the raw query that's behind that dashboard. And if you wanted to correlate that, you can add another query, like um, the one that we've seen earlier probably, which is something API. And yes, I can see there is some nice pop-up here that helps me 
API server request total, I think. That would be nice. Um, we already know some of the label because why not? The resource we know was deployments. And probably want to know we sum it by verb again. And we happen to know that we need to use a rate. Okay. Now that should be kind of similar to the query that we've seen before. And by adding that here, we don't see anything because like both the queries over here, but they have a very different scale. So let's turn out, turn out this metric. And then you can see that it's actually related. And it's the, the same thing that's like, it's building up requests and then it's crashing and then the rate is going down again. So um, this is nice. Um, but if you wanted to like um, manifest those queries now in your own dashboard, like for different metrics probably about your application, um, I don't think that's possible like integrated in the console today. Um, so what we use is uh, Grafana, which is, do you have a slide about Grafana? I think it's just a screenshot. So okay, so the next one we want to look at is Grafana. Um, that is also, it's not um, right away integrated with OpenShift, but it's kind of easy to install. So you can install it with the Grafana operator on any Kubernetes cluster. And again, if, you're, if you happen to run an OpenShift cluster, it's pretty easy because it's on the operator hub. You can install it from here. And I already did that earlier. And then you can see it here. You can create a Grafana instance, and it will just create a Grafana. You can connect it to your cluster Prometheus, which I also did earlier using a um, Grafana data source CR. And then you can, create dashboards on, um, on the Grafana. This is what an example dashboard looks like that I just deployed from some example tutorial. Um, and yeah, as you can see, you have, can create all kinds of different uh, graphs and add them to your dashboard here. And this one looks familiar. It's um, a Piazza one. You can also already see those waves in there, right? So if we, if we wanted to change the query that's behind that, we could also do that, like change the dashboard here. For example, if we wanted to um, restrict it again to the, the resources that we, that we did earlier, just to show what you, what you can do here. Okay. Like that, and you can see that it's a different, different thing. And what's really nice about um, the fact that we've been deploying it with an operator is that you can now use uh, the, the um, data behind that dashboard, not, not the data, but the definition of it um, here. And um, again, using the operator, you can deploy the dashboard. So you can manage the dashboard that is shown in the Grafana operator as code in your GitHub repository and automatically deploy it. Like when you update it, you export that JSON model here, um, put it in your Git repository, and then automatically deploy that to your cluster so you can manage it. I'm not sure how the how a code review process would look like for, for that auto-generated JSON here, but it's um, still something that, that you can do to kind of uh, store your, your dashboards. Okay, but um, for like the crafting the query itself, I personally pre prefer a different tool than the, I mean the, the Grafana, Grafana editor is great. You can, um, you also have some query builder and stuff like that, but there is also a different tool that I personally prefer, which feels more a bit of like an, an IDE for uh, Grafana queries, and that is um, from Lens. It's created by um, Julius Falls, one of the um, creators of Prometheus, so to speak. Um, it's open source in the meantime, so you can also deploy that to your cluster. And um, yeah, I show you how that looks like here. The fun thing, or the, the, the nice thing about Promless is that it also plays nicely with Grafana, so you can connect it to your Grafana instance. So all the data sources like the on-cluster Prometheus that I connected to Grafana are also available um, to the PromLens deployment. So in that dropdown here, I see all the data sources. In my current cluster, there is only the cluster Prometheus. So I can um, query that data source via the Grafana API that will tunnel it to, um, to Prometheus. So um, again, let's uh, put some query here just to see how it works. Total, that was a nice one. Okay, so um, yeah. Okay, let me make it a bit more complicated again. Probably I just copy it from the other.
something here to show you what it can do. It's buggy. No. Show you. Like that. Okay. So what's really nice about uh, prominence is that it explains the query to you. So it shows a tree, which is nice when it gets more complex. And in that tree, you can also see when, like a certain part of your query is slowing down the whole thing. You can see in which part of the query took uh, what amount of time, or if one of the part of the query doesn't return any result, and out of a sudden your whole query returns an empty result. Um, it will show you which part of the query returned how many results, so you can like better debug what's going on with your query. And um, what's also a nice feature is for coll collaboration, you can also create a, a shareable link, send it to a colleague, and um, to show the query, to collaborate on the query, and uh, work, kind of work together on it. Which is, um, I think, also a nice thing. And then when you're done, you copy the query and put it on your dashboard. And that's it. Um, okay, so um, this is about like creating all the queries. What I have now for you is kind of a, a short a show of queries that we have and, and, and that we actually use, which I think show um, how complex PromQL queries can be. And uh, I don't know who, who of you has like, at least once created a PromQL query. Uh, okay, nice. Who has like worked more than a day on a single PromQL query? Okay, and uh, who of you like one month later still understood what it did? Oh, like, okay, cool, nice. There, there are some pros. So um, th this is, a, like, like I said, a dear show of queries that we have in, um, in production. And um, I think it visualizes the problem statement that I'm trying to make. They, um, they get harder to understand as they get uh, more complex. And it's also easy to um, get in a mistake and then make wrong assumptions on your data because um, you thought that the query must, must be right and nobody but you understands the query. Um, so that brings us back to uh, what I mentioned earlier about like all the analytics tools out there. This is one um, open source example. I, I haven't worked at Superset and I don't have a lot of experience, but just to visualize how interacting with data can look like in like a different world, one might say this is more um, targeted as, at business people and um, people who have like a different kind of data. I would argue that th this is a nice way of interacting with data and, and I would like to do that with uh, the data we have in Prometheus. And I, I think today we, there is not a, like, a real nice way of uh, doing an interaction like that. Um, so I've been wondering why, why is that? So, and, and what can we learn from these tools really? What can we learn from business intelligence as a whole? And what can we take from that knowledge that we build up in, in, in decades really and apply it to what we are doing with the data that we have about our infrastructure? And when you look at how the data gets into a system in, uh, in a business intelligence system, that's like the, the middle lane in there, the blue lane, um, they have like a sophisticated process. They have all kinds of um, inhomogeneous data sources that they need to transform together, like they have data from a CRM, from an uh, ERP or whatever, and they run it through a process that takes some time. It's uh, called the ETL process, extraction, transformation, and load. So they really model the data so it all all data is uniform and then put it into a single system, which is the online analytics process, processing engine, and then run the analytics tool on that. We don't, we don't have that process uh, in Kubernetes in, open, in, in our environment today. What we assume is we expose our data in our application. It's all stored in the time series database. It's all uniform enough. We can like, right away write the queries um, to the raw data, and, and that would be fine. I think it's not like, like I don't really see all those 2,600 um, metrics that are in there being really uniform. Like they have all kinds of different labels. They can have the same labels, but a totally different meaning. So I think um, adding some modeling step in between would be something that could really help us again get a better insights of our data. And I call that process infrastructure intelligence. It's uh, kind of adding a, a modeling step in between where you like from the metrics that you know that you're interested in, you would create a model of them, a data model, and then run, transform it in a way so that you can run analytics with other analytics tools on it, for example. And just to, uh, to POC that, um, I've been studying a, a small prototype with a colleague, which we call Platon, because it's, it turns out Platon is thinking about Prometheus a lot. So um, uh, that's why we call it Platon. 
And that's kind of what it does. So what you can do with it today is um, using a YAML thing, you can define your data cube, which uh, contains of a bunch of uh, PromQL queries. And then what Pr Platon will do is it runs and queries uh, Prometheus about those metrics and stores the result of, the, of these metrics in a, a column store database, which happens to be uh, well suited for analytics, queries analytics use cases. And in that column store, we use currently ClickHouse for that. Uh, you can connect that to your um, analytics tool and then run, a, run analytics on that. That's the idea. And um, yeah, that's also what I can show you in, in a small PC. I hope that it's working. Yeah, okay, so this is a, this is superset with um, like two charts on a dashboard based on that data cube that I've just shown you and it's like related data to, um, to the one that we've seen before. So um, this is the dashboard and you can do things like, probably if I, if I remove all these charts here, then we can see the waves in here slightly from, uh, from the IPAs of a request. Um, it's not really, like, you can't really see the waves that we've seen earlier, right? Um, what we can do here is add a chart, similar to what we've seen before, like probably we want to create a bar chart on, on that data cube. And um, now let's put the verbs on the dimensions, that what we've done before, right? And maybe we want to see also the, the return code, that would be interesting. We can put that on the x-axis. And what else do we need? A metric. That would be probably this one. Okay, so we can create a chart. Um, in the meantime, there was a lot of data being added, so it takes a while without a filter currently. I don't know why it's so slow now. As I said, it's a POC, okay? So bear with me. Probably I can also just add it to the dashboard. Okay. Because there we have a filter. So you can see the new bar chart down here. And um, we can edit the dashboard so we can move it up. So you can see better on the smaller screen. Okay. And now, um, as we've seen in that nice video before, I can now click here on the list. And then it should filter all the other graphs. And then you can see like those. Um, those little waves. As you can also see that uh, the, the memory consumption is now zero because that data is not, um, correl cannot be correlated to the requests that, we have make, that we're making really, so that needs to be distinguished. Although the, the data of the two metrics is stored in the same single um, table, so you, if there are joint labels, you can also join them together and then make correlations between metrics. That's, that's kind of the idea behind all that, right? Um, Okay, I think that's already it. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at different metrics, and if you're interested in that infrastructure intelligence idea, you can um, have a look at the, at the GitHub project, probably leave a star. And um, if you're interested in the book, there is information up there. So, yeah, thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Are there any questions? Yeah, so, so the question is if there um, is the, the option or if we envision the option to take that uh, query building, that drag and drop query building to turn it into PromQL queries, right? Um, so currently this is more about like the, the analytics use case. So we're really extracting the data and turning it into um, a SQL database and then creating queries on that database. So that's uh, then SQL queries. Um, if you wanted like a drag and drop query builder for, uh, for PromQL, I think you might need to talk to the Grafana folks if that's something that they are planning to do. 
Um, I think it's partially there, so query building got easier with Grafana, but it's um, still a, a very tidy process. But currently, I mean, Superset is also, this is a like generic analytics tool. Um, I'm not sure if they are planning prompt kill support that you could use, but I'm, I don't think so. Yeah, please. Yeah, so the question is what the, the database backend is um, behind Platon. What we're using um, today in that prototype is uh, uh, ClickHouse, which is an open source uh, column store. So it's, Platon is like a small Go tool that's extracting data from Prometheus and storing it in, into, in that column store. Question up there. So the question was if we're using uh, machine learning on, on that data. Um, we're not doing that today, um, but that's the, one of the nice parts of doing that. Like you, you can leverage the functionality in, that you have in analytics tools, and some of them I know have um, uh, machine learning capabilities and stuff like that. I think there's even something like predictive analytics in, um, in Superset. So you, if your tool supports it already, if you have um, the data in such a in, in a database that can be consumed by a different analytics tool, you can leverage those fun those functions without them being implemented somewhere in, in the core or re-implemented in I don't know Prometheus or wherever. Okay, I see see no more raised hands. Then thanks for your attention.